So it's a great time right now to be making music virtually. I mean, check this out. <laughs> So we can't go and physically jam with other musicians, but you know what, these days it's so easy to make music virtually, and in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through a couple of projects I've done recently, doing exactly that, connecting with musicians and making some cool music, and show you the steps that you need to do to get a project like this going, and show you how easy it is too. So if you're new here, don't forget to click subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and click the bell icon, because I'm making videos like this all the time, and I don't want you to miss out on me. Right, let's get stuck in. <laughs> G'day, it's Nigel here from Sax School. Hey, thanks for joining me on another one of these videos. So we did a project recently within Sax School where we did a huge collaboration on the track Lean On Me. That was a massive job, and I'll tell you a little bit about that in today's video. But I also did a really cool collaboration with a musician from Brazil called Marcelo Gois. And it was a whole lot of fun, and it really got me thinking about how easy it is for us to be doing projects like this. Now, we're always talking about making videos with our members in SAC School, and we've got over 10,000 people who've been through SAC School now, and a big part of the learning process is going through the process of making a video and sharing it and getting feedback, because that's kind of like a baby step toward actually performing. So we're always doing that in our members area and it's a load of fun and it really helps my students to progress quickly. So if you've never connected and played with another musician, then doing something like this virtually is actually a great first step. And if you're already an experienced player, then this is a great way to connect with a whole bunch of new people that don't even need to live in your town. They could be anywhere in the world. So what's the first step for getting started with a collaboration? Well, I'd suggest you go out and explore musicians on YouTube and on Instagram. There's so many musicians on there, and you can find people whose style you like or the sound that you like, or are interested in the same style of music that you are. Now for me, Marcelo actually reached out to me on Instagram and suggested a project that we could do together. Uh, for my sax school project, the Lean On Me project, I actually instigated the project with all of my members. So I reached out to my community and did it that way. But I'd suggest the first step is to go exploring musicians on YouTube and on Instagram, chances and on Facebook. Chances are you're already connected with musicians who you admire already. Now, once you've connected with musicians, step two is to decide on the project that you want to do together. So for me with the Lean On Me project, I knew I wanted to do the tune Lean On Me and I arranged it for six parts. I wrote the music out and then I very clearly laid out what I wanted everybody to do. I wanted everyone to choose one of the parts and to record themselves and there were also some solo sections and they had to choose a solo section. I also got everybody to do a clapping take as well. So I told people very clearly what they wanted. For my project with Marcelo, he had a track that he already wanted me to add some saxophone to. So he told me, this is the track, and this is what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to come up with your own saxophone lines over my track. But it's very important that you define what it is you want to do together. Somebody in the relationship has to be the driver and making, be making the decisions on how to move forward. Otherwise, you're never going to get there. So you've connected and you've decided what you want to do. The next step is to get a guide track that you can all start to work on. So for the Lean On Me project, I recorded all the parts into one MP3 and I sent that out to everybody who was going to collaborate with me on that massive project. And we had about 200 people of our members who joined in. So they all had the guide track, they all had the music, and they all had the instructions from me from step two, so they knew exactly what they needed to do. Now for my project with Marcelo, he provided me with the track he'd already recorded with him on bass and Jonathan on drums. So we had the guide track there with the bass and the drums that I'd already done some video as well, and I had a chord chart, but I didn't have any music because he'd asked me to come up with my own lines. So every project's slightly different and you need to work out the best way forward for you, but super important that you're all recording off a single guide track. That way, all the videos and all the audios are gonna combine together and be in sync and work. So there's three more steps in the process, but first of all, tell me what would be your dream collaboration if you could collaborate with anybody, anyone at all, who would it be? Let me know in a comment, I'd love to know. So what's the next step? You've found your musicians, you have decided on a project, and you've got your guide track, so the next step, step four, is 
for you to start to create your part for this collaboration. And I'm gonna show you an easy version and a more advanced version that you could do for this step. So for my Lean On Me project, we had a lot of people join in. We have over, well, around about 200 players, 200 of our SAC school members that uh, sent in videos and joined in, which is pretty awesome, but it's also a huge amount of videos. So what I did is just suggest that people use their mobile phones to make their recordings. So they needed to choose their part, learn what they were going to play, and then use a different device to listen to the guide track. It could have been their computer or their laptop or their tablet or whatever, or another phone, and then use a mobile phone to record themselves and also record the audio. So the video and the audio all in one device, pretty easy. And you know what? Most modern mobile phones are actually brilliant cameras and brilliant recorders. Now a mistake that I made when we, was, we were doing this project is I didn't specify about using it landscape or portrait. That was a bit of a mistake on my part because of those 200 videos, some were landscape, some were portrait, and it made a humongous amount of extra work for me when it came to editing that project together. So if you're doing a large scale project, I definitely recommend that you specify everybody does a video, either landscape or portrait. I mean, landscape's my favorite. I think it gives you the most options when you're editing as well. So also it's a good idea if you're working with other people in your collaboration who aren't used to making videos, that you suggest to them that they have a nice clear background, they use plenty of lights, and they use a some sort of tripod or something to hold the camera still. And they also try and get all of them in the frame so that when you put it all together, it's gonna to look a lot nicer. So that's the easy way. Now, the more advanced way to approach it is to use a camera or your mobile phone, but also to record the audio in a more professional way. Now, there's lots of different ways that you can do this. For my project with Marcelo, what I did is I actually used the professional camera that I use for all my YouTube videos and all my sax school lessons, but I recorded my audio through a professional mic and directly into Logic Pro, which is a digital audio workstation or a door. Now there's lots of different door options. There's things like Pro Tools or even uh, Audacity or people use Fruity Loops or they use GarageBand. Logic Pro is the tool that I use all the time for recording. So that way I'm getting great looking video and also really great quality audio. And that means then I've got a lot more options when I go to put that together in the final product. Now there's no reason why you can't just do it on your mobile phone and there's tons of fantastic pro uh, projects, collaborations that are simply done with a mobile phone. You could also use a GoPro. Uh, there's just tons of different options, but if you've got a decent, relatively new phone, then you're off to a good start. So the fifth step in the project is to, of course, put all the video and audio together. Now, perhaps you're not doing it. Perhaps the people you're collaborating with are going to do all the video editing which is great because it'll save you a massive job. In which case, you're just gonna have to send over all your video and audio footage to them. And often the file sizes can be big, so you could use something like Google Drive or Dropbox or WeTransfer. Uh, those are all great ways to share files, big files with other people. For me, I did the video editing on the Lean On Me project, so everybody sent their videos into me. And uh, like I say, we had about 200 different videos, so there's quite a lot of work to do. Now, I use professional video uh, editing software when I'm making all of my videos. I use Final Cut Pro, which is an Apple software, most of the time for my YouTube videos or for my sax school lessons. But for the Lean On Me project, I actually used Adobe Premiere Pro because it seemed to be a software that was more suited to that kind of project where I had a vast number of videos to edit together. We had about 50 gigabytes of video. It was a humongous project. And Adobe Premiere Pro did work better for that. But for my project with Marcelo, I edited it together using Final Cut Pro. So really easy, in Final Cut Pro, you literally line everything up, just like you would in audio editing software. And the nice thing is you get to work on the sort of layout that you want, whether you want uh, scenes where you've got all four people on screen, or maybe there's some scenes where you've got three of you on, you can change it around and be a little bit more creative. It does take a bit of time and a bit of tinkering with, and if you're brand new to video editing, then you gotta be prepared for a bit of a learning curve. But you can always get help from somebody who's a bit more experienced, or you can dig around on YouTube and, uh, and learn the skills, which is exactly what I had to do for the Lean On Me project.
Now, of course, once you've got your final video all finished, then you're on to the last stage, step six, and that's where you get to share your creation. And this is, a, you know, an obvious step, but it's a really important one. So you've achieved something really cool. You've made some music with another musician or a bunch of musicians with the Marcelo project. Uh, Marcelo's in Brazil. Jonathan's in Finland, I think. So in different parts of the world. On the Lean On Me project, we had people from 40 different countries who sent in videos. So it's a fantastic achievement to to get something together that's finished like that. So make sure you do share it, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, wherever you can. And then tell your friends and family about it as well. But also, super important, make sure you do credit all the people who you're doing this project with because this is a fantastic win, not just for you, but for everybody who's involved with that project. And you all should be benefiting from it. So make sure you do add in the names of the people who did that project with you. So that's it. That's how you do a collaboration project. And I hope that you will go ahead and, and have a go at doing one of these because on whatever level that you are at with your playing, you can do a project like this. Inside SAC School, we have collaborations going on all the time between members from all different countries where they're creating fantastic videos together, whether they're in America or in Mexico or in England, Australia, anywhere. The music that people are creating together is fantastic and the sense of achievement is awesome too. So hey, if you want to find out more about SAC School, you can get a 14-day trial at the moment and get involved with some of those collaboration projects that members are doing. There's also over 60 courses and 700 plus lessons in there to help you succeed in a real step-by-step -step fashion. It's a fantastic place to learn saxophone. And you know, I'd love to see you in there and help you along the way. But of course, don't forget to check out the other videos on my channel too. There's a bunch of other stuff on here that will help you. Most importantly though, keep playing and having fun. And I'll catch you on the next video.